afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to Austin. We're so, so excited to welcome you today to our event. This is a huge moment for AMD, and it's a huge moment for our industry. We have so much to share with you today. What you will see is some incredible product innovation with Epic. You'll see our new approach to solving the most important problems in the data center. And you will see an amazing group of partners and our ecosystem here to support Epic for our launch. So let's go ahead and get started. If you look at where we've been, I became CEO of AMD a couple of years ago, and we really got on a path to return AMD to high performance computing leadership. Our entire company is focused on building great products, and we are uniquely able to do this. And if you really think about what we're trying to do with high performance technologies, it's really about setting incredibly ambitious goals and being extremely focused on delivering those goals through great execution. So a little bit about our strategy and focus. We are maniacally focused on our strengths and our core competencies. AMD is really the only company in the world that can provide both high-performance graphics and high-performance computing in unique solutions. And whether you're talking about gaming, or you're talking about the PC space, or VR, or AR, or machine intelligence, or cloud computing, everybody needs high-performance computing. That's really the key. But today, we're going to focus on the data center. Now, why are we so excited about the data center? Let me be clear. The single largest bet for our company is success in the data center, because it is an extremely exciting market. Over $20 billion in growing over the next couple of years. You need a combination of CPUs and GPUs, and we are uniquely provided, capable of providing both of those solutions together. So what is so exciting about the data center? Look, we're all a part of it. We all bring out the excitement. You know, we like to say today we're generating two and a half quintillion bytes of data every single day. Whether you're talking about emails, or Google searches, or tweets, or YouTube videos, Actually, they say that 90% of the data that we have in the world today has actually been created in the last two years. And we're just creating more every single day. So based on all of this data, we need to find a way to process it, analyze it, store it, share it. And that is driving an incredible set of new demands in the data center. So what is fundamentally different? The fact is, the data center of today is incredibly different from the data center of five years ago. We have all of these new and diverse workloads. And what it means is that there is no one size fits all. It's not just about the processor, frankly. It's about the system. And whether you're in the enterprise or you're in the public or private cloud, you need your data center built for your workload. And that is really what we're trying to deliver. So when you take a look at what that means, I just want to give you a little bit of context for what we've done at AMD. Because four years ago, we decided to address the data center, we really needed to build a brand new CPU core, a brand new platform, a brand new approach to system design, and we needed all of these to come together. And what I'm here to tell you today, and what you will see from everything that we have, we're going to show you, is we have absolutely delivered on those goals. So on the CPU side, we've talked about Zen. And some of our fellows are in the audience today. We've delivered over 50% instructions per cycle in one technology generation. That's really, really significant. We've delivered an entirely new infinity fabric with the idea that we wanted to architect for the future, that we believed you needed this new fabric so that we can interconnect chips in a very flexible way. And we also focused on design. 
and architecture with new low power design techniques to ensure that we had an extremely efficient core capable of scaling into the future. And so all of these are what contributes to the foundation of Epic today. So let's talk about Epic, OK? Epic is really you know, the next page for the data center. It's the new era. And when we say that, what are we trying to deliver, OK? First and foremost, it's performance leadership. There's no question that the data center wants and needs high performance, and we are absolutely delivering that. But more important than just performance, it's also about the systems and the workloads. Because of all of those workloads that I talked about, and you're going to see over the next um, hour or so, all of those require optimized systems for each of the different workloads. And we've offered a platform that can do that. And then finally, I'm extremely proud to say that it is also extremely important in the server business to have an open ecosystem. And that incredible ecosystem, based on x86, is available on day one. And that means that you will hear directly from our customers and our partners and the strongest people in the ecosystem today about their experience with Epic and their commitment to the Epic ecosystem. So with that, let's talk a little bit about product. Today, we're, we're going to introduce the Epic 7601. This is the high-end, the flagship dual socket processor that competes with the high-end of the E5 product line today. It's made up of 32 cores, 64 threads, 128 PCIe lanes, and up to 3.2 gigahertz in boost mode. And it's actually made up of a four-die MCM connected through our Infinity fabric. And this allows us incredibly flex incredible flexibility and performance for today's workloads. So it is an incredibly powerful processor. So now let me show you just a couple of benchmarks. And benchmarks you know, tell a little bit of the story. So first, with spec and rate using the GCC compiler, what we're showing with the Epic 7601 compared to the highest performance Intel Broadwell E5 that's available today, we are offering 47% higher performance. OK, that's integer performance. Go to floating point performance. Same comparison, spec FP. 75% higher performance with the Epic 7601 compared to the highest end Broadwell today. And we also have an incredible memory subsystem. And so our memory bandwidth enables us to have much, much higher capability. And in this Stream Triad benchmark, we're seeing 2.4x the performance of the Broadwell E5. <laughs> now, what I said earlier is as important as the individual performance benchmarks are, and look, you know, we like scores just like everybody else, we're actually really, really focused on optimizing performance in real system environments for real workloads. And whether you're talking about HPC or the cloud or machine learning or big data, it's all about performance in the workload. And there's a lot of optimization to be done. And so for us to really go into that, I would like to invite some partners up on stage to talk about real systems and real workloads. So with that, let me give you a little bit of background. Several years ago, when we started the journey to create Epic, it was a big, big bet for us as a company. And it was incredibly important for us to have a leader in the server ecosystem to partner with us and ensure, frankly, that we had the right requirements for the right time. So today, I'm very, very happy to publicly acknowledge as our first partner, our most critical partner, HP Enterprise and Antonio Neri, they were our foundational partner when we started Epic, 
and they have been with Epic Development since day one. So Antonio, please join us on stage. Elisa. Antonio, it is wonderful to see you, and I, I, you know, I'm so excited about today. So we've been talking about Zen for the, long t for the longest time, and I know that um, you and your team have been incredibly supportive of our efforts. Well, first of all, congratulations to Lisa and the entire AMD team. I mean, this has been an incredible journey that we actually committed to you, right, uh, a few years back. And the reason why we, we commit is because we believe in the need to have an open server ecosystem, in the need to have AMD to be competitive, and in the need also to work, um, you know, some of the, uh, the innovations you just described here together, because ultimately what customers are looking for is innovation to accelerate, you know, business outcomes. And I, I just want to congratulate you and the team because this has been an amazing journey. It has been a pleasure and honor to work with you. It, it, it has been an absolutely amazing journey. And as excited as we are about R&D, we are much, much more excited about products. So it's yeah. fun to be able to talk about products. So can you tell us a little bit about what you see in the server land right now? Yeah, well, obviously, um, we know something about servers. <laughs> we have been you know, leading this uh, industry for many, many years. And uh, first of all, what we, we were looking at, how we create an open server ecosystem. We have been leading industry standards for many, many years. And you guys are part of that, uh, that journey as well. We live in, a, in an area where everything has been disrupted. And you talk about the amount of data being the, you know, generated, the amount of data we need to store, the amount of data we need to share. So at the core of that disruption is because customers need to accelerate this time to value. And um, it, with the amount of data being created, you know, they're creating a lot of challenges. And ultimately, it's how we create an infrastructure ecosystem that allows customers to accelerate that time to value. And so, obviously, we saw the opportunity to work with you uh, and the Epic team to really accelerate that disruption and really bring more value to our customers in terms of performance, in terms of cost, in terms of agility. And so, I'm glad to say that we work together and uh, we are here to, to make some exciting announcement with you. Fantastic. So I think we have something to show our friends, do we? Yeah, exactly. Maybe we should go over to... Uh, Today we're we announcing with, uh, with, uh, with our teams, leveraging the Epic, the first um, hyperscale, the first cloud system, which is our cloud line 3150, which is based on the Epic system. And you can see it's a super, super dense server, uh, really designed for those uh, heavy big data enterprise workloads as well as the service providers uh, segment, which ultimately it really optimized the capabilities of the Epic in terms of memory, in terms of performance, in terms of power, with our system engineering, obviously, um, uh, attributes that we normally bring to market together. And this is going to be a workhorse, particularly for those workloads in the cloud space, uh, but also eventually in the big data, you know, what I call software defined storage intensive workloads. So we are super, super proud to introduce this today together with the Epic team and the AMD team. So that, that's super fantastic. Excited. Our very, very first platform. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Antonio. All right, you're welcome. Now, you know, our teams are very, very competitive. Yes, they are. They actually spend a lot of time together. Yes. They might actually say too much time together. No, it's OK. It's all good. When you have engineering working together, it's always a good thing. But I think what we have today is some very, very key um, performance records right. that we can put out because of the close collaboration between AMD and HPE. So I'm really proud that um, our teams are going to announce uh, later today we're going to publish a couple of world record scores on spec.org. And what we're going to show is with optimized compilers, the single socket Epic cloud line uh, server delivers over 30% more integer performance and 65% more floating point performance than the previous records from our competition. Yep. So that's a pretty good way to start, huh? I, I think it's an awesome way to start. And you can see that we are bringing in, a, in one single socket the performance of two sockets, right? Um, and improve that performance by 30% in addition to reduce power consumption and everything else. So you can see when we work together, we actually can create something unique and differentiate in the marketplace. 
Now, we have one more thing to share with uh, the audience here. We actually have some servers um, upstairs that yes. are running uh, some key workloads. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, I mean, as I said before, the 3150 is ideally suited for the software-defined storage. Um, upstairs, as you finish the event later on uh, this afternoon, you will see some of the demos we are running. And also, we have some uh, great solutions with NVMe, uh, working with other partners like Samsung. So, um, you will see there, you know, what we just talked about, it, a very super dense server, uh, NVMe capabilities, you know, the Epic platform built into it, obviously. And you can see the amount of throughput we can drive in terms of IOPS and in terms of uh, memory bandwidth and so forth, which is re ideally suited for those big, big data workloads. And well, we are excited about that. So let's show the audience our scores. You can see there, 9.1 million IOPS. We did it. OK, so as much as we love CloudLine and we're excited about it, you've also had an extremely yeah. busy couple of weeks. And um, just coming off of Discover, you've launched the Gen 10 platform. So yes. can you tell us a little bit about Gen 10? Yeah. So our generation you know, family of products now is going to reach the generation 10. Uh, which you know, is in the making for 22 years, right? So you go back 22 years ago, we introduced the first generation. Now we're in generation 10. And what is exciting about this one is I can say without any doubts, this is going to be the most secure industry standard server on the planet, period, end of story. And the reason why we can make that claim is because we actually develop our own silicon. You know, obviously we work with partners like AMD to take advantage of all the innovation they bring to market, but also we uh, actually build our own silicon around that ecosystem. And so we built what we call the silicon root of trust that's built in the server that provides second to none security at the platform level, which means, you know, you have a unique fingerprint to the encrypted firmware that actually has to match in order for the server to function. So we are bringing a level of security that has never been achieved before. And that's a true uh, incredible differentiation. The second innovation we're bringing is agility, agility at the world low level, which means that because of our engineering capabilities and our leadership in the market so for so many years, we can actually fine tune the optimization of all the resources inside the server real time to the workload that's running on that server. So we can fine tune clock speed, we can fine tune memory uh, utilization, and obviously all the I.O. that goes with it, specifically to that world dynamically, so that the customer can get not only the best performance, but the best TCL. Remember, this is going to be a server that has multiple NVMe configurations, honestly, one of the first ones on the planet, and allows us to also provide the best density. In fact, we believe the Gen 10 will provide more than 50% more density at the storage level than any other competitor in the market. And last but not least is what I call economic control. One of the things that customers are looking for today is consume infrastructure very different from the past. It's not just a CapEx model, but allow me to pay only for what I use. And in that example, with our leading efforts around uh, IT consumption model, flexible capacity, capacity care, we actually allow the customers, through our metering capabilities in the server, be able to only pay for the jobs that run through the server and not paying for one that is not needed. So we are bringing tremendous innovation, both at the technology level, together with our partners like you, and also in the business model level, in the way they consume that infrastructure. But in the end, this is going to be the most secure server on the planet. Now, there's no question. I mean, HP has such an incredible reputation, and I'm sure Gen 10 is going to really take it to the next level. So what are your plans with Gen 10 and Epic? Well, obviously, we're going to continue to work with you and your team to bring future uh, in, you know, products to the market, in particular in the second half of 2017. Uh, and obviously, we have plans to continue to add more Epic solutions to our products. So we're going to be looking forward to that and then continue to work with you on the next generation of that. Fantastic. Well, look, Antonio, I think um, I couldn't be more personally thankful for your leadership, your team's um, support for us with Epic. We are extremely excited about CloudLine and Gen 10, and I look forward to a, a strong and lasting partnership. Well, thanks for giving us the opportunity to work with you and to be the foundational partner. That's an example of what we can do together, but I know we can do much more. Congratulations for another great launch. Thank you. Uh,
All right, so how super cool is that? Um, but you know, we have such a broad ecosystem that um, can benefit from Epic. In addition to our OEMs, we have also been working very closely with our OEMs and end customers to test Epic. Dropbox is one of the leaders in file hosting and sharing globally, and also one of our early partners. So let's hear a bit from them. Dropbox is one of the world's largest collaboration platform with more than 500 million users and more than 200,000 business customers using Dropbox every day to get their work done. And that means we have a lot of different workloads in our infrastructure, all the way from requests that we handle from a million of users to syncing more than billions of files every day, and even more compute intensive workloads that require us to process data to generate previews to enable search on the content that people store at Dropbox. Our customers and users expect our products to be fast, to be reliable, and efficient. And we are committed to using the best hardware to deliver that value to the end users. So we had been looking for processor solutions that provide us with high performance. Single socket solutions are very appealing to us because of the architecture and the cores and the memory bandwidth they provide, and it fits with what our needs are. We got early access to Epic, and everything that we have seen so far is extremely encouraging and exciting. Our level of engagement with AMD has been extremely high. I'm looking forward to Epic being part of our roadmap to deliver the best value to our end users. And I'm very, very happy with the collaboration and the partnership we have developed during the course of evaluating Epic. You know, it's great when you hear from customers because they tell you exactly what problems that they're trying to solve. And when you think about the problems in the data center, you realize probably the single largest disruption in the data center over the last five years has been really the emergence of the cloud and the growth in the cloud. So for our next guest, I would like to introduce our next partner, Corey Sanders, who is representing Microsoft Azure. And let me ask Corey to join me on stage. How are you? Great to see you. Yeah. Corey, you look like you just came from the data center. Yeah, absolutely. So I figured that the best time to wear a sweatshirt would be June in Austin. Someone didn't tell me what was going on. So Lisa, it's awesome to be here. It's really great to be here. And um, you know, I think I'm pretty excited about the announcement today, and I'm pretty excited to get the chance to work with you. Uh, as you know, cloud is really changing the way customers work. It's one of the biggest changes we've seen probably in the last five to 10 years. It is the heart of digital transformation. And when customers come and talk to me, they're looking for the cloud to change the way that they innovate, change the way that they approach their customers, make it faster, more agile, global coverage and be able to really reach their customers in new and very interesting ways. And that's part of what I'm excited about Azure and part of what I'm excited about this new partnership as well, or existing partnership, because our customers are also really looking for cutting edge technology and always looking for the latest and greatest. Well, and when I think about it, um, Corey, you know, we really want to make sure that we are attacking the requirements of tomorrow. And Azure was just the perfect partner for us to think about what's next in hyperscale, just given your leadership there. Right. So what is next in hyperscale? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, when I think about the opportunities for customers, when you look at Azure and our global coverage, when you look at the way that we're able to touch our customers around the world, uh, it really does change a lot of the ways that customers interact. So not just in their ability to innovate, but also in new technology forms, things like IoT, things like machine learning, things like AI. And these new forms of technology can really enable customers to accomplish new things that before were impossible. No, and you know, I think um, we share that same vision, and it's all about collaboration and how we get there. So you know, we've had a really deep partnership in many different areas, but you know, this Azure partnership is so critical for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you know, we've been working together for a long time, right? We've obviously worked together on Xbox. We've worked together on Windows Server and Hyper-V. Yes. Uh, you know, this additional growth and, and partnership when it comes to Azure has also been a long time in the making. In fact, we've been working with you since the beginning of AMD Epic. Uh, the goal being, hey, you know, can we work together to make sure that our customers' needs, make sure that the cloud needs are built right in, which has been fantastic. That open partnership has been really one of the key aspects that's made it great 
to work with AMD on this project. And in fact, it's been so powerful, we've seen from the beginning goals that we had actually a 15% improvement in performance even from what we set out to do at the beginning, or from what you set out to do at the beginning. We reap all the benefits, I guess, uh, or our customers do. So it's been absolutely fantastic. I think that open partnership, that ability to work together has really reaped a lot of benefits to us and our customers. No, I, I completely agree. And I think Microsoft and AMD really share um, a common goal of open ecosystems. And you guys have just had you know, a big announcement about Project Olympus at Open Compute Summit. So tell us a little bit about your goals there. Yeah, definitely. So you know, we've been doing open source software for some time. Uh, with Project Olympus and the uh, Open Compute Project, we've sort of taken that open source uh, mental model over into hardware. And some of the same goals are there, right? being able to do great innovation, reduce the time to market, be able to have great collaboration. And that's even beyond just us two, right? Yes. That's collaboration with a lot of folks out there, some of them competitors of ours, right? And being able to bring the entire community together to, great, to make great innovation for our joint customers. I mean, that's been fantastic. It's been a great opportunity to partner further uh, with AMD. And we're really excited, actually, that AMD Epic powered Project Olympus hardware is being built right now in preparation for Azure. And so it's fantastic. You know, um, I'm so excited about those pilot clusters. Actually, I know some of our engineers are working really hard. Tell us what you plan for deployment. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when we look at those pilot clusters as part of that OCP solution, we're very excited, of course, that all, more than 90% actually of the hardware that's deployed in Azure is OCP specified. And this will, of course, expand that. And so as part of that, as I mentioned, our customers are looking for innovation, looking for cutting edge. They're looking for performance that's fantastic, top of the line while still getting a great price for it. And I'm really excited that with AMD Epic, we're going to be able to offer all of that. And so as part of this, right, we are uh, announcing today that based on the companies working together, uh, we are bringing together that winning combination of AMD Epic uh, and making sure that Azure is the first global cloud provider to offer AMD Epic soft uh, hardware, excuse me, with Azure software and by the end of this year. So it's going to be fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Corey, thank you so much. Thank you for the partnership with Microsoft. We are extremely excited about what we can do together. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. All right, so look, by this point, you get the feeling that we're pretty excited about what Epic can bring to the market and what our partners can bring to the market. And so with that, I'm going to bring Forrest Nord to the stage, who's going to give you a lot more detail about the entire Epic portfolio. Forrest? Thanks, Lisa. Well, thank you all so much for coming to the EPIC launch event. We are incredibly honored and, uh, and pleased to see all of you. Uh, and we're incredibly honored and, and pleased, all of us, to be representing uh, a truly amazing body of work that, that thousands of engineers have, at AMD have labored over for the past five years to bring to fruition. And so Lisa introduced the uh, EPIC 7601 to you. I'd like to go ahead and talk to the rest of the uh, family, the Epic 7000 series of processors. Now, all of them are based on the Zen Core, those whose genesis was over five years ago, started by a lot of folks in this room as we have members of our CPU design team here in Austin uh, present today, along with industry analysts, customers, and guests. That Zen core, up to 32 of them, is the foundational element for every Epic processor. But beyond that, every Epic provides a full range of support for eight channels of memory, up to two terabytes of memory capacity per CPU socket. Every Epic provides support for 128 lanes of PCIe I.O. Every Epic has full support for a dedicated security subsystem that provides some unique features we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Every Epic integrates the chipset and all of the Epics and the platforms built around them are, have guaranteed socket longevity. So customers who embark upon us this Epic journey today know that there'll be more members of the family, more generations yet to come to drop into those platforms. And so let me now paint a picture 
of the full range of the first Epic 7000 series family. So it's a fairly simple stack. We have nine SKUs covering the full range of performance from entry level up to leadership performance. At the base, we have eight cores. We have three parts that have 16 cores, two parts with 24, three parts with 32. Every one of those cores supports symmetric multi-processing, symmetric multi-threading, sorry. So you can have two cores, two threads running on every core. And the frequencies of those parts start in all cases at two gigahertz and for over half the family extend up to three gigahertz or above in boost frequency. As I mentioned before, every one of those parts without exception has unrestrained memory capability with the ability to access eight channels of DRAM, up to 16 DIMMs per socket, and of course, a full complement of, of PCIe. On the power side, the EPIC power family ranges from 120 watt TDP socket at the low end up to 180 watts at the high end. It's a very simple family. It's a very simple stack, and it's an unrestrained set of features that allows our customers to buy the level of performance that they need without con concern of artificial limitations pushing them in to a different part of the stack than what they required. So at the top end, I showed you before is the 7601. That's a leadership two socket part with leadership and world record uh, performance. 47% higher performance on spec int than the leading competitor. And that's based on 45% more cores, 122% more memory bandwidth, and 60% more I.O. But perhaps even more important than that leadership two socket performance is the disruptive capability that we're bringing to the market with our no compromise one socket server. Where one epic can outperform two Intel 2650 V4 processors with 21% more performance while dissipating 17% less energy and offering 33% more cores, more memory bandwidth, more I.O., even in a one socket to two socket compare. That's pretty disruptive. That's offering customers new choices to right size the system to their workload. And the value of that, the value of the efficiency that that can bring to the data center is something that our customers around the world are recognizing. And I'm honored to bring to the stage one of those customers, uh, uh, one of the leading cloud customers, cloud and AI customers in the world, one of the leading innovators in those areas. Uh, and so let me bring to the stage Mr. Lu Chow from Baidu. Hi, good to, good to see you. See you. Yes, no worry. Very good to see you. So, uh, Lou, you know, thanks for uh, thanks for coming. We definitely would like to understand a little bit more about uh, uh, about Baidu and the needs of your data center. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nord. Baidu is the leading Chinese search engine and AI tech company. In the future, I think uh, we are going to witness a new era of the search engine with general purpose AI system. Therefore. Our new mission aims to simplify the complex world with technology. And with the large amounts of data that in the cloud that you've got to process, you must face some real challenges in meeting your customers' needs. Absolutely. At the core strategy of Baidu, AI should be supported by four fundamental strengths, including massive data storage, super powerful computing, excellent algorithm and uh, big applications. Being the AI infrastructure and the product, Baidu Cloud is exceptional, which embraces an integrated approach of AI, big data, and cloud computing, as known as ABC strategy. Baidu will leverage ABC abilities to benefit the enterprise customers and help them 
to explore the potential of AI age. Absolutely, and for that reason, Baidu chose to be an early adopter of Epic a technology for the advantages that it brought. Yes, correct. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce a video of the president of Baidu, uh, Dr. Zhang Yaqin, to talk more about uh, our partnership with AMD and the uh, experience with AMD Epic. Fantastic. Yes. As the world's largest Chinese search engine and the leading AI company, Baidu devotes itself to simplify the complex world with technology. We are very excited to see AMD launches EPIC. It is a major innovation in the field of data center computing and opens new possibilities for general computing and AI. Baidu works very closely with AMD to develop a brand new single socket server for our data centers and AI stack. The single socket server is being optimized specifically for Baidu's data center workload, including search, machine learning, cloud, and autonomous driving. The test shows that the EPIC solution can significantly increase computing efficiency, reduce energy consumption, and help Baidu reach a better TCO. I look forward to a closer partnership with AMD to unleash the power of AI and help our customers around the world. Thank you. It's Thank fantastic. You. Thank you. As you can see, the AMD IPIC delivers a significant step forward by offering the industry the first no compromise one socket server, helping by to achieve high service level for our customers while uh, optimizing uh, our OPEX and addressing density challenge. We are looking forward to promoting the data center innovation of AI age together with AMD, uh, better serve our customers around the world. Thank you, Mr. Liu. I'm, we are ecstatic okay. to be helping in, uh, in the cloud infrastructure needs of such a leader in the global uh, industry. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, the Mr. partnership. Thank, Thank you. you. And so, you know, if you step back and you look at it, what are we bringing to market with the 7000 series? We're bringing really two things. It's a, it's a split strategy. We're bringing that industry's first no compromise one socket server that allows customers a new set of choices for right sizing the system to the workload needs, offering the right performance, the right capability, and improved power efficiency and operational efficiency of their data center. And then on top of that, we have a leadership, to, a flagship two-socket server that is setting world records for performance in the two-socket class. A high-performance, balanced architecture that's the result of literally millions of hours of work of engineers across AMD over the last five years. And so we're bringing an incredible family of processors to the market. But all of that performance wouldn't really matter if we didn't simultaneously up the game with security. Because as we all know, security is becoming a bigger and bigger concern for us all every day, for businesses, for individuals, for governments. And every day, unfortunately, Data breaches are reported, data records are compromised, malware is injected, financial data is lost. And so when we began developing Epic, it was critically important to us to build a rich set of security innovations that would help our customers build upon their own capabilities and to provide the most secure systems possible for this new era of the cloud. Now that begins with a foundation, a foundation where the user is assured that the system is booting free of malware, that the bias and the firmware have not been compromised in any way, because if the foundation is rocky, 
no, nothing solid, nothing secure can be built on top. And so we can provide that secure foundation with AMD hardware validated boot. But beyond that, we decided to bring encryption to the server in an entirely new way. Woven deep into the heart of every memory controller on every Epic processor is a crypto engine that encrypts and decrypts transactions as they go outside of the Epic processor, securing the data, the instructions, everything stored in memory off of the machine. That brings a whole new level of security. In fact, it even allows physical security to be brought to the market in an entirely new way. And in, in today's servers, where you have non-volatile DIMMs now available, you can walk up to a server if it's not, you know, you can walk up to a server, you can pull out the memory stick, even of a running server, walk off from it, stick it into another server, and your data, your applications are compromised. But not with Epic secure memory encryption. That data is still secured, protected, uncompromised. We then extended that concept beyond uh, just encrypting all of the memory to allow individual virtual machines to encrypt their own set of memory separate from one another, separate from the operating system. Why is that important? Well, that means in a multi-tenant environment, in a cloud environment, users of a virtual machine can be assured that nobody else can compromise their data. Even if there's a rogue systems administrator inside of the cloud data center, their data is protected, their data is secured. You can even move encrypted virtual machines from one cloud to another, from one data center to another, from one continent to another, without ever exposing the user's data. That's security for the cloud era. And by the way, all of this can be done. And by the way, all of this can be done because we wove this so deep into the heart of the machine with a 1% impact on performance and with no changes required to anybody's application. So this is usable security for the cloud era. Now, Security is important to all of our customers, and I'm pleased to, uh, to welcome up to the stage another one of our customers for whom security is, is critical to their value proposition and to their systems. And so I'd like to invite to the stage now my good friend, Ashley Garak Parala, the president of Dell EMC Servers. <laughs> Ashley, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you. I was hoping that perhaps you... <laughs> yes, just wanted to make sure that I was the tallest one that presents today, I think so. you're, you're, that's a pretty... <coughs> I think that's pretty safe pretty much anywhere you go. Yes. You're going to be the tallest guy that, uh, that presents. I think uh, there for a little time, I was nearly the short... Ashley and I worked together years past. I was nearly the shortest guy on the staff there for a little while with Absolutely. the Williger and you. Um, so I was hoping you could perhaps tell us a little bit more about, about uh, your thoughts around uh, Dell's plans for your next generation of servers and how you guys might incorporate AMD technology. Absolutely. Thank you. Good afternoon. Really? Good afternoon. I thought this was going to happen. Come on. Thank you. Welcome to uh, Dell Theater. Thanks for joining me. Um, so. Thanks, Forrest, you know, uh, and to uh, everyone here who uh, I understand there's quite a few of the employees of uh, AMD. I'd just like to say uh, congratulations, quite a launch. Uh, this is impressive. And we're glad at Dell EMC just to be a part of that. So if, if I could, I'd like to just explain a little bit how we think about IT and transformation and then uh, how that translates into our new generation of servers, and then how uh, Epic fits in that, because we think it's, it's a great fit. 
and we're really welcoming the return into the enterprise of AMD. So for us, it all starts with a customer's application. Typically, that is going to be the best proxy for a customer's business. And from there, if we do things right, we allow most of our customers in a digital transformation are looking for cloud-like agility. Not cloud-like location, necessarily, because cloud to us is not necessarily a location, it's a methodology and a way of doing business. They want flexibility and agility in how they approach their application. Eventually, it lands on infrastructure, and that's why we're here, and that's why we're excited. And with that infrastructure comes the ability to provide services, and customers want the flexibility of how and their terms meet that infrastructure, and that can be OpEx, that can be CapEx, that can be by utilization, by capacity. We really want to meet the digital transformation of our customers head on, on their terms, as they compete within their industries with others. So, for, uh, for myself, you know, obviously my team is extremely proud of being now crowned the world's best selling server. And we're, we, uh, we spend all day and every day thinking about how to innovate around the compute layer. But it's become in a software defined infrastructure world, the compute layer is the bedrock of the modern data center. And we think the Epic technology, as it fits into our portfolio, is really going to unlock a series of other applications. So whether it be hyperconverged infrastructure, whether it's scale up into the CI converged infrastructure world, whether we're talking about scale out, high performance storage, we really think this is an application where infrastructure isn't just about server, but is software defined infrastructure. And we want to be able to offer that that whole portfolio to our customers. If you look into how we just how drop into the server layer for a second and how we think about that, we spend each and every generation mining those nuggets from our customers in rich conversations with them. I think this generation we had close to a thousand stories written just about systems management automation, for example, and building out a theme of how our customers want to transform their businesses. And we came across three themes consistently with each of our customers around digital transformation, scalability, automation, security. I think hopefully they're obvious to most folks. But for us, what they mean is the workloads that are emerging in this, in, uh, this digital transformation are sometimes based on legacy or traditional workloads and applications, but more and more are based in this cloud native world. And they, we need these workloads that are emerging to be scale out. They're unpredictable in their nature. And some of the good news for a lot of our, for instance, web tech customers is even their own businesses grow so fast they can't predict it. They have the ability to make IT their business. And if they win at that business, then they win against their peer set. If your infrastructure can't scale as fast as your business, then unfortunately, you decay very quickly. So for us, it's things like software-defined storage. Uh, it's adding, for instance, for us, six times more NVMe drives to our servers than previous generations, 19 times more capacity. It's things like offering a boot environment now where we can take up 16% of the space we previously did for the OS environment and saving 98% of the thermals and the power necessary. These are all efficiency, workload, and scalability. But a lot of the customers are trapped. They're trapped in managing IT. We want to get into the business of managing their business instead. And for that, it's always about cloud-like agility with automation. We spent years and years trying to leap forward. Dell uh, technology has a rich portfolio of 20,000 plus patents now. We spend four and a half billion dollars in R&D every year. And we spend it towards customer problems, such as, I don't have the skill set, I don't have the capability anymore, and I don't know how to manage and scale my business. I'm throttled. Can you automate on our behalf? And we can do that. For instance, in this generation, we can save 90% of the time it would take to have a service event just through support assist and call home features. We can save 98% of the steps it would take just to deploy, configure, now, when you just plug in a server, a 14G server, 
With Epic technology, we'll be able to configure the server on the fly. It'll do it itself. It'll become part of the environment and deploy its OS. So we got to automate. And Forrest hit it right on the nail, security. If you have incredible assets that you're building around your business, whether you're it's business analytics, high performance compute, whatever it is, security is paramount. We, for us, it starts with the way you code, the way you build a supply chain, the way you test and validate, penetration test. But it ends with innovation that's built into the box that the customer can really build out of. For instance, the world's only system lockdown, where we can lock down your systems to make sure that whether it's an outside threat, a malicious hacking, or an insider threat, we have the ability to understand and by policy lock a system down so it cannot be configured by anyone else. System erase so that you can walk away from a computer, redeploy it, and know that the assets are secure and completely wiped out and secure boot. Pretty, pretty uh, meaty concepts to talk about. I'd really like to be able to show you one of these uh, concepts, especially around security. It's important to us. And we believe that uh, the technology that we'll be incorporating from Epic really brings that security story to the next level. So let me show you a little bit about what we're doing. Forrest, thanks for waiting quietly on the side of the stage for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the, uh, so what I have here uh, under this, uh, this nice blanket is the opportunity to show you our 14G server with the uh, AMD technology in it. Um, this would be on, but it'd be a little bit noisy up here on stage. Uh, and so we actually have another version backstage running. And what we're excited about is the ability to show you some of the technology that now comes together between Dell EMC and AMD. So Forrest, right. let me invite you over here. Step Absolutely. over here. We've got the ability really now with the secure system secure, secure boot, system erase, and now SEV technology that Forrest mentioned earlier, to really protect your systems from uh, it, hacking from external sources. And so let me show you a little bit about how to protect yourself from those attacks. So Forrest, uh, I'm excited about uh, these servers. It's a good looking box. I think you should be excited. I think uh, what we're going to do today in a bit of a, an Escher painting, I'm going to use a server to order a server for Forrest. So bear with me for I'll a second. Like um, so you so you're going to you're going to enter my data there. Uh, you know, uh, yes. So, so but don't worry because I have it running on a server that is roughly protected. Maybe some SSL, some other. Uh, hey, wait a minute. That's my wait. data up there. Is that somebody scraped the virtual machine? So, um, wait a minute, that's my social security what's, number. <laughs> what's interesting about this, first of all, the fact that I had it, um, second of all, <laughs> is the fact that now a hacker has it. Um, I feel bad, I really do. Um, you know what, let me switch to the Dell PowerEd server, let me turn SEV on, and let me show you how, what so you're going to turn on and secure encrypted virtualization. So this we, transaction will be secure. This transaction as it goes through the server and we send it through, we'll send it through that PowerEd server with SEV on. Now we've got the ability to protect all the way through, not okay. just data in flight, data in rest, and data in memory, which is something really new and unusual. Uh, you know, I feel bad, so this time it'll be my treat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and buy you a server, sir. Fantastic. Um, and uh, as you can tell, at least my data, now don't take a picture of this side, um, <laughs> my data is secure. Uh, and now I'm excited that you'll be getting one of the very first servers we have. The, uh, what's what's going to be really exciting for us is not just the fact that we can layer in this technology, not just the fact that you'll get one of the first servers, but just the fact that we are going to be able to introduce a, a new line of servers with the Epic technology. And this will be an, an awesome introduction. Uh, back into enterprise for AMD. So we're excited about that, and thank you, Forrest, for the opportunity. Okay, and I think we're going to, if we put up the slide again. So, in the, uh, if you're excited too and you like one, second half.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Ashley. I can't wait for my uh, secure PowerEdge 14G Epic based server to arrive. And uh, it was probably even worth losing some of my personal data for that, uh, that purpose. <laughs> Um, but, you know, look, it's, it's customers around the world are excited by the security technology. It's, it's our partners such as uh, Dell and HPE, but it's also the leading cloud providers because they understand that with the SEV technology, they can offer a whole new level of security and peace of mind to their end customers. And so I'd like to introduce a, a short clip from one of our uh, uh, early adopter Epic customers. Uh, one of the leading cloud providers in Europe, One and One. One and One is a 20 years old hosting company operating on a global level with more than 10 data centers. We're providing infrastructure and platform services to our customers. Many of the customers, and especially our SMB customers, are afraid to move their systems to the cloud. SMBs give us their core of their business. So if we fail, their complete business might fail. So we have to make sure we have to guarantee them that we do everything to keep their systems secure even on the shared infrastructure. One, one was able to get one of the first APICs available. What APIC provides us is a fairly new range of performance we haven't seen before in any other processor line uh, that we have actually in the data center and that's actually available on the market. We take this new generation of AMD APIC and build products for our customers that allow us to deliver secure containers secure virtual machines to the customers for developers to develop their application, their software on our cloud infrastructure and for the SMBs to be safe in our cloud infrastructure to get their on-premise equipment partly or entirely transferred and migrated to our cloud infrastructure. I think hardware is the only level where you can provide this degree of security that is required for the customers. So that's not only that this processor delivers more performance, it allows us to address more memory, which then puts our entire system back into balance again for all the cloud products. This is the beginning of a long, long story, and we have to ensure that this partnership continues on this close level. I'm really happy and amazing to see now that AMD is back in our data centers with a fairly new and amazing uh, processor. So the support and interest and engagement from our customers, end customers, cloud customers, OEM and ODM customers, has been incredible over the last year as we've really prepared to bring Epic to market. But equally important, maybe even more important, is the support that we've garnered from other members of the server ecosystem. Because without them, you know, a server without software, without memory, without disk, is pretty useless. And so I'd like to invite uh, my colleague, Mark Papermaster, the CTO of AMD, to come to the stage and introduce the rest of the story. Thank you, Forrest. Mark, you know, before I go, I, I must say that you must, of all people, you must be incredibly proud. Of, uh, of today. I mean, Mark was here at the beginning, helped kick off uh, the Zen project, and in fact, that whole roadmap. You're an old server guy, as am I. Uh, it must be a pretty, I hope, it's a pretty special day for you, and, and I certainly, you know, want to thank and congratulate you on, on the, the journey that you started is coming to a beautiful, beautiful point. Forrest, thank you very much. Appreciate it. it. It actually is an incredibly proud day for me. It's an incredibly proud day for the AMD team. As Forrest said, uh, we launched almost five years ago the new Zen microprocessor effort. And you know, we knew we were sitting on incredible talent around x86 and the IP of an x86. And we knew how to do servers. We had deep experience in servers. But it was about putting it all together and setting a, a very aggressive goal to get back to high performance. And that's what we did. And as a proud team today, uh, we're going to show you that as we roll this out, it's not only about high performance, but it's about, as Forrest said, the ecosystem. Because we're leveraging x86, and it's a seamless application for our customers to deploy. 
So you think about uh, what we've done in terms of instruction set architecture, pure x86, to be able to take advantage of the tool chain that's out there, the existing code that's out there. It just runs. It just works. It's x86. It's interoperable. And as well, we're fully committed to open standards, as we have been at AMD. And so that's what you're going to see today. You're going to see how we've been working with the ecosystem to leverage that capability and, in fact, optimize it, optimize all of the features that we put in within our x86 microarchitecture as we roll this out in the ecosystem. And so what you're going to see is what we've done really across uh, hardware and software partnerships uh, with the ecosystem uh, to be able to hit the ground running as we launch Epic Systems. And so I'm very pleased uh, to invite uh, out here with me today our ecosystem partners, uh, because you're going to see and you're actually going to hear uh, directly from them as to what we've done. So let me, let me welcome uh, our partners to come out. And we'll set up a, a, few, uh, a few chairs here. And uh, what we'll do is go through uh, just a quick uh, discussion with each, each one of them. You're going to hear from them as to uh, how they've been working with Epic and how together Epic and these partners will deliver value to our end customers. So uh, out here with us today, Ray O'Farrell from VMware, Victor Pang from Xilinx, Chris White from Red Hat, Jin Man Han from Samsung, Aaron Chappell from Microsoft, and Kevin Deerling from Mellanox. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, let's start with VMware. Ray, if uh, you don't mind, yep. uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, as a leader of cloud infrastructure and virtualization software, uh, how do you see leveraging and, and partnering uh, with the AMD Epic system and VMware to the mutual advantage of VMware customers? Sure, Mark. Look, uh, first of all, I obviously want to congratulate AMD on this event and all the engineers behind this. Uh, many years of effort has gone into uh, produce a piece of technology and a product like this, and I think it's uh, it's uh, just something. Uh, some of our engineers work with your engineers, and it's a, it's really important to just see it reach this uh, launch date. Very happy to see that. Um, when you look at uh, any sort of ecosystem or any sort of partnership, it's always around what are we going to do to solve a problem for our customers or create a new opportunity for a customer, and. Um, VMware over the last few years has pushed into cloud management, mobile device management, um, uh, public private cloud management. Uh, but at its heart, underneath all of this is the SDDC, the Software Defined Data Center. Mm -hmm. And at its heart, that's around running hardcore workloads in data centers, whether public or private data centers. And at its heart, that's around how do I make sure I can run the most business critical workload, and how do I make sure I can get great usage of that infrastructure, consolidation from a management point of view. And that's what we see uh, as we work with uh, AMD on Epic. When we look at uh, some of the uh, memory bandwidth advantages, we can see, OK, that's how we can run some very sophisticated new types of workloads. When we look at the core counts, we begin to see, OK, that's how I can get even greater consolidation into the mix, which cuts straight to the economics and the management of, uh, of the data center. So, you know, we've been working uh, with uh, AMD over the last uh, months and years, and uh, our current version of the product, 6.5, an update of that will be coming out pretty quickly. Sorry, the product is obviously vSphere. Uh, an update of that will be coming out very shortly with support for the Epic processor. And uh, I'm looking forward to working further with AMD and with all of the uh, server OEMs as we go through certifications and so on over the next months to make sure we can bring this product across you know, the modern data center. Excellent. Ray, thank you very much. Well, Victor, you know, Xilinx is a leader in providing FPGA solutions and acceleration to, for optimized performance in the data center. Uh, give us your thoughts on opportunity with the Epic platform and how we can partner together to, again, bring more value to our end customers. Yeah, again, I think it's been, uh, Lisa said it well and others, that uh, the demand uh, for performance 
at the system level, at the application level, is just exploding, right? And with all the data that's being generated, you need the computes for that. And it's really about delivering that optimized performance for workloads. And the workloads actually are changing quite dynamically. What we've been collaborating together is in the acceleration space. Of course, you know, AMD has their GPUs, and that is a place in acceleration. Where Xilinx is all programmable FPGAs play is the fact that the tremendous flexibility of our technology, the reconfigurability in systems, enables us to be customized and optimized for all these various workloads, whether it's machine learning, you know, genomics, financial analysis, database analytics. Uh, this flexibility becomes a very powerful thing. In fact, not only is it helping in the compute space, which are all these applications, but also in storage applications as well as on the network side. So I think that's the complement to you know, what the GPU acceleration is, the flexibility and the power of FPGA-based acceleration. In fact, you know, that flexibility is driving even new services in the cloud space, such as F, uh, FPGAs as a service, FAAS. So we've been collaborating with, the, uh, with AMD not only on the Epic platform, which is tremendously performance uh, in terms of its capability and all the PCIe uh, lanes that it has, so it can definitely bring that TCO and high performance to the system level uh, applications we discuss, but also in standards, driving the ecosystem with the C6 standard, which is the interconnect for acceleration, again, acceleration for compute, storage, and networking, leveraging the infrastructure that exists today in the data center, but going far beyond that in terms of its performance and, and its uh, scalability out in the future. So the collaboration has been awesome. Uh, our engineering teams really work as one engineering team. I think we've uh, done a lot both at the product level and also in the standards and look forward to doing more of that. So, Excellent, excellent. In an era where Moore's Law is slowing, this type of work on acceleration and this partnership will be even more important going forward with our customers. Thank you very much, Victor. Well, Chris, I'd love to ask you after you know, a, a decade of partnership of, between AMD and, and Red Hat and the commitment to open source, uh, your views on the open hybrid cloud, uh, you've, you've been uh, incredibly focused in driving adoption. How can we partner even further together with open hybrid cloud uh, between AMD Epic and Red Hat? Sure, well, again, thank you. Uh, congratulations on this exciting launch. Uh, it's, it's been quite a journey. We've been a participant in this journey for quite some time. The history that we have together doing innovation in the open, bringing open source and, and new technologies together is rich, starting from the initial 64-bit uh, implementation of x86 in the Linux kernel and subsequently in our Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system, adding virtualization support uh, initially with Zen and then, and then later with KVM. And today, the Epic support, I think, really demonstrate the value of collaboration and, and openness. In fact, what, what we see is much of today's innovation in software is happening in open source communities. Uh, we are already supporting the Epic in our RHEL 7.4 beta product, which will be GA soon. So just an example of how working together, working early in these open source communities can really accelerate bringing new technologies to the market. The Open hybrid cloud is a space that we've been really focused on, and we see more and more of our customers adopting a combination of private cloud technology and public cloud technology and looking to span applications or applications to span across those different environments. Uh, for us, one of the key platforms to enable that, uh, starting as a, with RHEL as a foundation, is OpenShift, our container platform. And with container platforms and the kind of modern software architectures, I think we're seeing something really interesting in the industry today that, that Epic really nails, which is as you start to modernize your software and decompose a monolithic application into, into services that you aggregate to provide the, an application, core count matters, memory bandwidth matters, I.O. bandwidth matters if you have more services that are talking to each other. So it's a really nice platform for uh, building block for bringing this next generation application architecture to, to, the, to the industry. Um, I think another really important piece here is you've heard a lot today about data. It's a data-driven world. We're producing tremendous amounts of data. Uh, data is really driving application value or, or business value, whether it's 
at the application level or whether we're driving uh, infrastructure with data through interesting uh, combinations of machine learning and all of the logging and metrics that we're gathering out of the infrastructure. Uh, this is a, a really important piece where accelerators start to, to really take hold. And so I think this is a great uh, combination of new core x86 platform plus a great uh, foundation for accelerated workloads that allow uh, as more and more of our customers are taking their applications to the hybrid cloud, it really allows them to take advantage of uh, the lower cost of uh, more efficient infrastructure and the quicker time to market in terms of automation and agility that comes with these modern software architectures. So something that we're really excited about and enjoy the work we've done together so far. Chris, thanks very much. Appreciate it, and we look forward to the partnership with you on that optimization. Thanks again. So next, I'd like to ask uh, Jim Monheim, you know, I think about uh, the game-changing performance with Epic, and you think about the kind of performance that we're bringing. Well, clearly, memory and feeding that, that beast of an engine is a key part, but there's many other opportunities for collaboration. Uh, with the Samsung uh, portfolio, uh, please give us your thoughts on some of those opportunities. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, Samsung believes that Epic ent Enterprise will embrace Epic's tremendous potential of taking CPU to a next level of efficiency. And for the first time, um, Epic will be able to provide data center customers with means of taking full advantage of our most advanced DDR4 and SATA and NVMe solid state drives. As for storage perspective, because Epic can now support 128 PCI lanes, also it can support uh, 32 SATA and NVMe slots per socket. So this represents tremendous uh, pipeline for anyone who is pursuing high capacity, high bandwidth uh, storage systems. And I also believe there are three major applications in which memory and storage systems take on critical roles with, uh, combined with uh, Epic. That is, those are, one is uh, software defined storage, the second one is machine learning, and third one is high computing, high, uh, high computing system. And especially for machine learning, I believe that the combined with AMD's Vega GPU and uh, Epic CPU, our high bandwidth memory, which is so-called uh, HPM2, I think we can have a lot of opportunities to collaborate further. And as a leading supplier of memory and storage devices, we will uh, continue to heavily investigate, invest, invest, uh, invest in uh, innovation, and we'll be uh, providing solution and technology to customers so that they can uh, excel and succeed in the marketplace. Thank you. Excellent. Jim Ma, we look forward to those collaborations and innovations with you going forward. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, next we'll, we'll chat a moment with Aaron Chappell from Microsoft. And Aaron, of course, a, you know, a, a very close a collaboration uh, between AMD and uh, Microsoft on Windows Server 2016. Uh, tell us what we can e expect uh, with the collaboration going forward with Windows Server 2016 in Azure in the data center. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Well, Microsoft is super excited to see AMD's re-entry into the server space in such a big way. Corey talked earlier about the role AMD plays in Azure's data center itself. And we're looking for, forward to uh, the same level of strong partnership as we think about the on-premises space. Um, quite frankly, we've been overwhelmed by the positive response to Windows Server 2016 since its launch last fall. Uh, and AMD and Microsoft have been working both at the street strategic level, but also at the tactical level to make sure that Epic on Windows Server 2016 is a reality starting today. With Windows Server 2016, one of the things we've invested in significantly are features that require great hardware underneath. And so uh, the engineers at both AMD and Microsoft have worked to enable our hyper-converged Storage Spaces Direct solution to provide software-defined storage, starting with Windows Server 2016 today. As we look forward to our continued collaboration, you know, we look at expanding the work we're doing in the software-defined space to networking and security. 
We're also working uh, to ensure we optimize running Windows Server containers on top of the Epic platform to really provide innovation in that developer environment. You know, Windows Server containers is one area that we've seen a lot of interest as people look to modernize their applications and take traditional applications, move them into containers, take advantages of the DevOps tooling and, 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 and processes, um, and then look to how they re-architect those applications applications moving forward. You know, and as we know, with modernization of the application platform, the underlying infrastructure is modernized as well. You know, as I said, this, this starts today with Windows Server 2016, uh, but really our focus has been around you know, reliability, speed, and throughput of the Epic platform to make it a match for Windows Server. Um, and I'm excited that with um, our launch of Windows Server in the fall, we'll be moving to a semi-annual release cadence that will just increase the agility and speed with which we can partner together to drive innovation in the market. And that virtuous cycle that comes Right, with uh, the customer feedback coming through something such as our Windows Insiders program and that getting driven into the innovation that we then put forward, uh, we really think that this starts to respond to what our enterprises are telling us, which is we need to move at the cloud speed that exists today that the business demands that we operate in. Of course, to us in Windows Server, that's critically important because Windows Server is the base of our cloud offering, both public and on-premises, in the Azure data centers and through our hybrid offerings. And when we talk to customers, we hear nearly 60% of customers today have a hybrid strategy, and over 80% will be deploying in the hybrid deployment model for the foreseeable future. That is why at Microsoft, we really build hybrid into the foundation from identity to data platform, to the management experience, and of course, our, our Azure platform. So that is one of the reasons why we're, we're thrilled to be working with AMD in this partnership that spans both our public cloud and our on-premises and delivers value not only to our enterprises but our service providers as well as the Azure Data Center. Well, we really appreciate the partnership on the optimization of Windows Server 2016, and we are really looking forward to bringing epic performance to the Azure Data Center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Next, we're going to hear from Kevin Deerling from Mellanox. And uh, clearly, with the uh, performance, memory, and I.O., uh, Epic was designed to scale. And scale needs connectivity. Well, Mellanox is a leader in connectivity and bringing high performance connectivity, uh, better memory and I.O. capabilities to the data center. If we could hear from you, Kevin, a little bit of your thoughts on the partnership opportunities with Epic. Thanks, Mark. We're really pleased to be working with AMD and really all of the Epic ecosystem partners here today. And the great thing is, is this is a fantastic platform. So if you look at the system level, it's not just about this powerful compute engine, but also about the memory, capacity, and bandwidth, and a unmatched I.O. subsystem. And then we can take that and bring best-in-class networking capabilities to scale that out. And the great thing here is that because it's x86 based, we really get all of the investments that the entire ecosystem has made over many, many decades. And so we get starting with our heritage in high performance computing, our InfiniBand connectivity to build HPC clusters. And then also now the new class of 25, 50, and 100 gigabit ethernet that's being deployed to deal with all of this massive amounts of data and all of the data-driven applications that have been talked about, you really need that type of connectivity and we have a balanced platform that meets that. So whether it's things like financial services, media and entertainment, uh, the new big data platforms, all of the AI and machine learning that have been enabled on top of either InfiniBand or RDMA, which is our Rocky technology, all of those are up and running. We're pleased to report that we're getting line rate performance uh, on the Epic platforms. And also things like DPDK, which is part of the NFV for the telco market, 
we're running OVS over DPDK and getting full line rate performance. That's also about packet management and packet per second. And so we're getting all of that. So really what's exciting here, whether it's a storage application with software-defined storage, working with uh, Microsoft and all of the other vendors here, we're getting all of that and it's just running and just come up. We've been really pleased with how quickly that's come up. So all of these applications, uh, will be enabled here, and we're looking forward to connecting some epic-sized clusters. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kevin. Appreciate your partnership. <laughs> so you can see, as you've heard from our ecosystem partners, and the kind of collaboration to come together and ensure that we're ready as we launch Epic into the ecosystem, that we do that with a full capability with our ecosystem partners. One more hand for them joining with us at our announcer today. Thanks very much. Thank you. So we are ready. We've been incredibly focused. We've been working for years to ready the high performance Epic platform to bring it to market with our ecosystem partners. And what we thought we'd do is show you an example, a set of details with a, a partner in Supermicro. What I'd love to do is invite Don Clegg to join me on stage where we could uh, describe to you, Don will describe to you some of the detail behind what Supermicro has prepared to launch with our Epic platform. Let's give a hand to Don Clegg. Welcome, Don. Thanks, Mark. Well, really appreciate you joining us here today. And, you know, we'd, we'd love to get your thoughts about the Epic platform. And, you know, from a Supermicro standpoint, what are some of the, the features that you're looking forward to taking advantage of? All right. Well, well thanks, Mark. And, and thanks for the 10-plus year relationship that we've had with AMD at Supermicro. And congratulations on your Epic launch today. So one of the core value propositions of Supermicro lies in its engineering expertise. And that engineering expertise, it allows us to have the broadest, most differentiated product portfolio with the best performance and unrivaled time to market. And you know, when AMD shared with us the Naples design, we saw a fantastic opportunity to combine the Supermicro engineering strength with the unique AMD differentiated features to provide real benefits to our customers. I mean, just to put it simply, broadest, most differentiated portfolio with the best performance and unrivaled time to market. Uh, we really uh, appreciate the partnership, Dom, and I'm wondering if you could share with us a little bit about the uh, portfolio that you put together. I'd love to. We're really excited to give you a glimpse of our a Epic server line that we're announcing today. So starting with our A plus Ultra, which comes in 1U and 2U, well, Ultra, as its name implies, gives you ultra flexibility in memory, in networking, in storage fabrics, including NVMe, in add-on card density and efficiency. And on top of that, with its thermally optimized design, it works across the entire range of CPUs at maximum load. So the Ultra has really been a strong um, product for Supermicro in the enterprise and data center space. Really happy to be launching the, the A Plus Ultra family. We're launching a mainstream product. At, as the name implies with mainstream, it's the traditional workhorse workload family of products with proven x86 server technology. And then finally, the big twin. The big twin um, the A plus Big Twin is a super micro innovation. For those that don't know, the, the Twin architecture, it's a family of products that have multiple independent nodes in a single enclosure. Each of those nodes can be optimized and configured as best suits the workload. And that has gotten a tremendous traction, and in, in naturally in a scale out HPC environment, but really also in the newly emerging hyperconverged space and also in the software-defined uh, storage space where redundancy is critical. So let me just give an example on the NVMe side of things. We were thrilled with the Naples architecture that allows us to eliminate the need for external PCI Express switches when we do NVMe designs. Yeah. 
customers get an immediate benefit of lower cost with no, without the cost of the external switches, and they get a performance benefit because without the switches, there's lower latency through the path, and the performance numbers go up. So again, all of these products are in the Supermicro gallery, and you can see how we leverage the AMD uh, technology to achieve broadest, most differentiated, unrivaled time to market, and oh yeah, best performance. Well, Don, it's a very exciting portfolio you put together, but uh, I think I know what some of the folks here are wondering, and that is, what kind of performance are you seeing with the Epic platform? Well, well Mark, I'm happy you asked. So, if we, if we go to the next slide and give a peek. So today at spec.org, it will be published today for two processor environments. You will see the highest recorded 2P spec int and spec FP benchmarks um, recorded. Again, remember, two processor, and this is with the standard compilers. And like I said, available now Supermicro, come and see it in the, in the Supermicro uh, gallery. Excellent. Excellent. That is fantastic to have a partner committed, a like Supermicro, to bring this kind of performance out to the market. Don, thank you very Mark. much. Pleasure. So it is an incredibly exciting day to be back in high performance, to be back in the data center. And with that, I would like to turn it back to my colleague, Forrest Norod. Forrest. Thanks, Mark. So again, it's incredibly gratifying to have the support of the whole ecosystem uh, with us here as part of the, exit, as part of the EPIC launch. Um, and so, you know, I've talked to you about the uh, performance, about the range of features uh, in the uh, EPIC uh, processors. Uh, but now I'd like to give you the rest of the story and dig deep, a little bit deeper into the performance of every SKU and the competitiveness and the value that we're bringing back to the market. So first, let's look again at the 7601. By now, you're familiar with the performance advantage that we have against the top end E5 part, and you saw a moment ago the performance advantage we have even using optimized compilers, even against the E7 part that Don showed. But the 47% advantage against the uh, 2699v4 with more cores, more threads, more memory capacity, more memory bandwidth and more memory I.O. is even more impactful when you take a look at the pricing and the positioning of these products. So we're delivering 73% more performance per dollar with the Epic 7601 versus the 2699. More performance per dollar for your CPU dollar. But as exciting as the leadership is at the high end of the market, the reality is most customers do not buy the top end SKU. They don't need that level of performance, or at least they don't want to pay for that level of performance. If you take a look at processor sales for the last few years, most customers buy lower in the processor stack. And in fact, the most popular single SKU is probably the E5-2640. And so let's take a look at how Epic is positioned against that, that core of the market, that heart of the market. And there, our performance is even more pronounced. The Epic 7301 against the uh, uh, Xeon E5-2640 delivers 70 percent more spec in performance than today's competitor. And when you combine it with the, the, the value that we're bringing to market, it's 93 percent more performance for your CPU dollar, which is, I think, truly exceptional. We've taken that model.
We've taken that model to offer more performance at every price point, and we've applied it to every member of the Epic 7000 series family. So from the top to the bottom, from our eight core to our 32 core, we're offering substantially more uh, performance at substantially better value at every price point. But I want to take you back to that market picture one more time because, in truth, if you look at the distribution of where people buy processors today, 60% of the market is at that 2650 level or below. And that's where, again, we think we're offering something truly unique. The ability to address that majority of the market in an entirely new way. And so, with the 7551P, we're offering in a single socket server 21% more performance at less power than two Intel 2650V4s. And that translates into 38% more performance per CPU dollar, two socket, versus one socket. So I don't think you'll be surprised by my next slide, because again, we've taken that same, predictable as we are, we've taken that same model and applied it to every point in the, the bottom half of the CPU stack, offering a one socket alternative with substantially better power efficiency and value and more performance than the Intel two socket alternatives. And so, again, one socket versus two socket <laughs> across the realm. So it's a simple strategy, it's a simple stack. It's offering in a very straightforward fashion, unrestrained processors that provide performance leadership at every price point across the two socket server spectrum. Adding to that, that you new capability to offer a single socket alternative with all the server performance, capability, redundancy, resiliency, and availability features that customers need. But since that is a new concept, we're going to make it even more impactful and offer our one socket server SKUs uh, at even better price starting price points to allow customers to really embrace this new era of right sizing their system to their workload. And so, And so to wrap up our focus on Epic, you know, I just want to summarize what, what I think we've told you here uh, today and what we've brought to the market. We've brought a series of processors to the market that are reintroducing competition and choice, that are offering better performance at every competitive price point, that have unrestrained features and capabilities that don't force customers into making an artificial choice between price and capability, that bring unique security features to the market that's really security for the cloud era and security that's usable without application changes or performance impacts, and a line of products that has full support of the industry ecosystem, starting with the base foundation that it's a fully compliant x86 server processor line. The code just works. And then adding to that the strong ecosystem support of our hardware and software partners to continue optimizing and, and further improving support for years to come. And then finally, the most exciting part is at the conclusion of the beginning of this journey that we've been on, the journey that Mark and his team started five years ago, 
The end of the beginning is today because Epic is available now. So thank you very much. Sorry I broke up there a little bit. It's been a long journey for us all. Epic is available today! So with that, I'd like to wrap this epic portion and turn it back over to Lisa to talk to us a little bit more and conclude on AMD's commitment and vision for the data center overall. So Lisa. All right, was Forrest excited, you think? You know, for those of you who know Forrest, that's as excited as Forrest gets. So, um, look, it's been a wonderful afternoon, and I really want to wrap this up with talking a little bit about the big picture as it relates to the data center. And I started with the beginning as, as important as Epic is and as the processor is, it's all about the system and what you can do in the system. And AMD is uniquely positioned to put that all together with Epic, with our Radeon Instinct GPU compute product line, and with an open compute ecosystem. We are totally committed to bringing all of these things together. And when you think about it, the main message is the Epic is a wonderful product by itself. Radeon Instinct is a wonderful product by itself. But we've actually architected these pieces together, thinking about how do you build the world's greatest systems. And if you look at the workloads that are really driving the most tremendous growth over the next few years, it's AI, it's machine intelligence, it's deep learning, it's HPC, and all of these need some combination of CPUs and GPUs to work together. So let me talk just a little bit about our GPU roadmap. You guys know us as a GPU consumer provider. We are very, very proud of our Radeon product line. But we are also making deep investments in GPU compute, primarily to address these next generation workloads. And our new architecture, Vega, was really architected with compute in mind, and really what the scale out infrastructure would need. And so incredible performance really optimized libraries that we're going to bring for some of the most important MI workloads. And so what I'd like to do today is also launch our Radeon Instinct product line. So let me come over here. And so today, what I'm showing you is Radeon Instinct MI25. MI25 is based on the Vega architecture, 64 compute units, 12 teraflops, 24.6 of half precision floating point, and what you really see is an incredible amount of performance in this package. And as I said, we're thinking about not just the GPU card, but how does it fit in the system. So you heard a lot from us today about how we designed Epic and the idea that we wanted to make this system very, very simple. We wanted to be able to connect our CPUs to GPUs in the most efficient way, and we can uniquely do that with a single socket EPIC environment. So think about it. A single socket processor can connect up to six Radeon Instinct cards without any additional switches in a very simple system architecture. And that has incredible value in terms of total cost of ownership and what you can do in terms of performance capabilities. So what I'd like to show you today, actually, is the very, very first system. It's a single socket server with four Radeon Instant cards. We put this system together with our partner Inventec. And what you see is just an incredible amount of performance. So think about it. Single socket CPU with four Radeon Instinct cards at 25 teraflops each, you get 100 teraflops of compute in this form factor.
There is an incredible amount of excitement about the innovation that we can bring with form factors like these. And you're going to see many, many more of these coming from our partners over the next couple of months. Now, as exciting as all of this is, one of the things we wanted to be sure that our team understood and our customers understand is this is not just about a product launch for AMD. We're extremely proud of Epic, we're extremely proud of Radeon Instinct, but this is about a commitment, a long-term commitment to innovation and leadership in the data center. So in addition to Epic, which is available today, we already have parallel teams in place working on Rome and Milan, which are the next two generations. And so we have an entire roadmap available out through 2020 that guarantees the same amount of performance, leadership, and innovation that you see in Epic today. So with that, let me bring this to a conclusion. We've given you a lot of information today about the Epic ecosystem and the Radeon Instinct capability. You're going to see a lot more um, as you go upstairs and look at some of the demos and the show areas. But what we really wanted to say is we believe in innovation in the data center. We believe that with Epic and Instinct, we're bringing a new era to the data center. And we believe that with performance leadership, with the ability to optimize workloads, with the ability to have this extremely strong global ecosystem, together we can do something extraordinary in the industry over the next few years. Thank you very much for attending today. Now, with a big event like this, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to take just a few seconds for a couple of thank yous. First, I want to thank everyone who came to join us um, to listen to what we had today. I especially want to take a moment to thank um, our global customers, partners, and the ecosystem that was here to show you what we can do on day one. So a big round of applause for our entire ecosystem. And then I'll also say, you might see some less than perfectly dressed people in the audience. Um, if you happen to meet them, it turns out that uh, this week in Austin is also our fellows forum. Um, our fellows are the highest level of recognition for our engineering staff. And to have them join us, because we would not be here without their capability. So thank you. As we said, a new era in the data center starts now. Thank you very much.